and welcome to St. Francis Xavier's Church. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. Francis Xavier's Church, Greater Box Hill Parish. We acknowledge that we are on the Wurundjeri Wurrung country in the city of Whitehorse. Today, we celebrate the 30th Sunday in ordinary time. Today is World Mission Sunday. This year, World Mission Month in October has focused on the essential work of priests, religious, and lay missionaries in Cambodia, supporting people with disability and their families. We will have a leaving collection at the conclusion of the Mass. Father Tony is our celebrant today. Please join in the entrance antiphon. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning and welcome. Thank you for joining us in person and thank you for joining us on Facebook and YouTube. Today as we celebrate, a reminder of the local rules, uh, checking in QR codes, masks, etc. Social distancing and sanitising. Uh, for those of you joining us online, uh, you might like to put your uh, prayer intentions in the comment box or might like to greet one another as we begin. We're mindful of the mercy of God. We seek his pardon and forgiveness. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The Lord says this, Shout for joy for Jacob. Hail the chief of nations. Proclaim, praise, shout. The Lord has saved his people, the remnant of Israel. See, I will bring them back from the land of the north and gather them from the far ends of earth, all of them, the blind, and the lame, women with child, women in labor, a great company returning here. They have left in tears. I will comfort them as I lead them back. I will guide them to the streams of water by a a smooth path where they will not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. priest has been taken out of mankind and is appointed to act for men in their relations with God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. 
and so he can sympathize with those who are ignorant or uncertain because he too lives in the limitations of weakness. That is why he has to make sin offerings for himself as well as for the people. No one takes this honor on himself, but each one is called by God as Aaron was. Nor did Christ give himself the glory of becoming high priest, but he had it from the one who said to him, you are my son, today I have become your father, and in another text, you are a priest of the order of Melchizedek and forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus left Jericho with his disciples and a large crowd. Bartimaeus, that is son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting at the side of the road. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout and to say, Son of David, Jesus, have pity on me. And many of them scolded him and told him to keep quiet. But he only shouted all the louder, Son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him here. So they called the blind man, Courage, they said, Get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he jumped up and went to Jesus. Then Jesus spoke, What do you want me to do for you? Rabboni, the blind man, said to him, Master, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go. Your faith has saved you. And immediately his sight returned, and he followed him along the road. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Blindness is uh, an interesting phenomenon, the inability to see. More common then than now, of course, and that's specifically because of the work of people like Fred Hollows, who've been able to uh, restore the sight to people who've had cataracts or uh, various forms of diminishing vision. But Physical blindness is not the only sort of blindness, of course. There's also domestic blindness, where we can't see what's right and obvious right in front of us. Uh, domestic blindness is much more a phenomenon of the modern age than in the past. There's also the conventional wisdom that says that uh, 
If we see something, then we can believe it. When I see it, I'll believe it. You often have people say that to you. But then some people see it and they still don't believe. They're not blind. They just refuse to see reality. Their perception is distorted. And so I would put to you that believing is in fact a form of sight. Believing is seeing. Because when we believe, we start to see the confirmation of our beliefs. So we don't need sight to see what we believe. Faith can be enough. And today's story about Bartimaeus is a good example of that. Bartimaeus was sitting by the side of the road. He was going nowhere. Sitting there, begging, because he could do little else with his lack of sight. However, he resisted two very frequent and common temptations in this day and age. The first one was to feel self-pity, to feel sorry for himself. There's no shortage of people who, when they're distressed or disadvantaged, give in to the temptation to feel sorry for themselves. The second temptation is to try and do it all on our own. Bartimaeus resisted that temptation by calling out to Jesus. And so he sensed who Jesus was and where he was from the commotion going on around him. And he thought, here's my chance. Here's my chance to do something, to ask the Lord, the son of David, for sight. And he starts yelling. And all the crowd get upset. The crowds often get upset when people yell and scream. It's just, I uh, suppose, a normal thing. Like we prefer quietness. Jesus says to him, what can I do for you? Let me see again. Interesting. Jesus asked him, what can I do for you? Because he wanted Bartimaeus to engage. And he didn't want to do for Bartimaeus something that he wouldn't want for himself. Sometimes we can presume what other people need rather than giving what they ask. Jesus carefully says, what do you want? I'd like to see again. And then Jesus does that, gives him the gift of sight. The silence of the crowd who were just wandering along is not enough. We, he actually has to yell and scream and Jesus calls him. It's a metaphor for us too. If you believe in Jesus, then ask him for what you need. Don't presume he knows what you need. Ask him for what you would like. It's time to speak up. Clearly, in the Gospels, those who speak up and ask the Lord for something are rewarded, like the rude widow and the nuisance neighbour who kept banging on the door until the person got up to help them out. Persistence clearly pays in prayer and with the Lord. Interesting, now that Bartimaeus can see, he knows who Jesus is. And suddenly, he's got a road to follow. He's not stuck by the side of the road anymore. He's got a mission in life. He's called to be a disciple. And he follows Jesus down the road. His life is up and moving again. But what about us? We meet the same Jesus here in the Eucharist, in our prayer. Do we go home like the rest of the crowd, just quiet, silent, respectful, with lots of decorum, but not much expression? Or do we go home with new sight? Do we start to look for the presence of the Lord in our world and in our lives? See, too many people want the bonus without the onus. St. Teresa of Avila said, do God a favour, ask for something great, don't 
bother him with the little things. Ask for something great. Now let's keep the faith. And on this World Mission Day, let's not keep it to ourselves. Keep the faith, but spread it to others. The local mission is just as important as the overseas mission. But the whole universal mission of the church is fascinating when you think about it. The statistics from the end of 2018 show that the world population was growing. It's now seven and a half billion people. And Catholics make up 17.73% of that. There are 1.3 billion Catholics in the world. But that number, while it's growing, is diminishing as a percentage of the population. The number of people per priest, 18,000. The number of Catholics per priest, 3,500. There are 400,000 priests in the world. That number is diminishing. So clearly our missionary work is important. Spreading that mission. We stand now and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We are the people the Lord has saved. As we follow him along his way of faith, let us lift our hearts to his Father in prayer. Uh, for the Plenary Council, as we come together as a parish community to respond, Jesus, give us more profound faith, greater courage, deeper spirituality, and the ability to discern. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For wise and responsible judges who minister the laws of our nation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people suffering from failing eyesight or blindness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick members of our families and parish, especially Angela and Salvatore Basile, Terry Welsh, Greg Koffler, Angela Buttergeg, Therese Walsh and Davy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who sleep in Christ, especially, and for those whose anniversaries occur at this time, especially Wa Chang Robert Ho, Val McMahon, John Francis Boyce, Terence Bartholomew Brady, Frank Postman, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, as we lift our hearts to you in humble supplication, so we prepare to return to you our love and gratitude in the Eucharist of your Son, our eternal priest, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Amen. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and you've arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you've made and forever to praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim.
fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dew call, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who've pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall.
We cannot but speak of what we have seen and heard. Para algo tan grandioso, el silencio simplemente no sirve. In diesen unsicheren Zeiten, wer wird die gute Nachricht hören, wenn wir nicht sprechen? Ni nani atakayesikia habari njema ikiwa sisi hatusemi? We all stand together for our brothers and sisters, for our children, for our families. We need to be people that do as Jesus did, push out into the deep, reach out to others that need our help. Today, the voices that must be heard is not always the loudest. We stand united with our brothers and sisters. Con fede ci uniamo, fratelli, alle nostre sorelle. Con fede ci uniamo, fratelli, alle nostre sorelle. We must tell of the great things that happen when people know that God loves them. We need to continually reach out to one another, to break down barriers, to welcome the stranger, and to offer a helping hand when our brother or sister is in need. For we are missionaries, all of us. Karena kita adalah missionaries. Dahil tayo mga missionero. For we are missionaries. Asa na missionary. Y es que somos misioneros y estamos todavía aquí. We are still here and we cannot but speak of what we have seen and heard. We'll have a, uh, a leaving collection today for uh, World Mission Day uh, as part of the, uh, that celebration. And those of you at home uh, are watching, you can uh, put Catholic Mission into a search engine and you'll find a spot where you can make a donation for the missions as well. Uh, thank you today to Michael and uh, Merrin and the choir for the beautiful music. Margaret for proclaiming the word, Deacon Edward and Andrew, our servers, and Anne-Marie on the vision mixing today. Uh, and uh, Dennis for helping with the uh, Eucharistic minister as well. So uh, great to have congregation back together and hopefully a larger congregation in months to come. Let us stand and pray. May your sacraments, Lord, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to God. God.